We're now doing lesson 67 and this one is globalization. I've got loads of layers on because it's freezing cold outside. But right, what is globalization? Well, you'll find lots and lots of different definitions. The definition that I like and the one that's easy to remember is you can produce your good anywhere, you can sell the good anywhere, and you can raise your money anywhere in the world today. All right, so that's quite a nice definition of it, but they've also got the word we are interdependent. So the war is now interdependent. What China does, China was producing a lot of our manufactured goods. So we are dependent on what they are doing, but they're also dependent on us because we've got to buy, go out and buy their goods. Okay, so whenever we're talking about globalization or emerging markets, we really need to be also talking about Ansos Matrix. And Ansos Matrix is all about risk. That's what it's, that's what it's there to do. Now, basically, the further you, you, are, you are out on this square, the riskier the project is. Now, diversification is the riskiest strategy of, of all because that, what that means is the firm's got a new product in a new market, okay? But just moving to a new market, like moving to China, that's obviously a risk. Why is it a risk? Because obviously the firm's got to spend lots of money. It spends lots of money, that's going to hit the firm's cash flow. Or if it develops a new product, that's obviously a risk because the new product might not work. Okay, but in reality, is it a, is it a risk? Well, if you take the example of Tata JLR, and I've got loads of different firms as well down here. Tata Jaguar Land Rover, Tata saw an opportunity that the Jaguar Land Rover had a great brand name, so therefore they could hopefully sell their, good, their goods globally. So that's what they did. So by moving into China, first of all, with their big Range Rover Evoque, it sort of gave them a first move, a first move advantage into that market, strong brand, Therefore, they could charge high prices. Therefore, they got a high gross margin on that vehicle. The price elasticity of demand probably would have been inelastic, certainly in the short term, so they could raise the price. That product would also have a high income elasticity of demand, which means as incomes are rising in China, which they are due because there's very high rates of economic growth. So as incomes are rising, more luxury goods are going to be demanded. And the Jaguar Land Rover is clearly a luxury good. However, there's clearly a risk involved. Research and development, cash. Uh, it cost Tata GLR 1.5 billion to buy Jaguar Land Rover. Uh, and Ansos Matrix would clearly say that it's a risk because for them, it's a new market, China. And for them, it's also a new product. I know they produce cars. They produce the Tata car, which is selling only for about $2,500. And they also produce the, uh, the Range Rover Evoque. In the short term, profits will increase. In the long term, of course, we would expect new competitors to enter that market because you're making lots of money out of it. That is what the free market does. But they would have built up a brand in the first instance. Do lots of firms, uh, are, are, are a lot of firms trying to expand abroad? Yes, of course they are. Virgin, right? Virgin is willing to go into any country as long as there's a good market for their product. They move into that country. Tesco is in 12 countries, probably because they saturated the UK market. So we're looking abroad to develop their model. But it's not an easy thing to do because there's a big change in culture and they've got to learn about the particular country that they're moving into. McDonald's has gone global. Uh, Volkswagen, Skoda. Skoda is huge, is huge in Asia, been very, very successful when Volkswagen took over Skoda. Apple has clearly gone global. It's uh, made by Foxconn in China, so it's got cheaper costs. Nokia has also gone global. Dyson produces their goods abroad. It's so much cheaper, so subcontracted out. M&S, okay, M&S used to have all their clothes produced abroad, but now they've gone into reshoring and they brought a lot of their production closer to home. It may be, the, the, the clothes may be made in Eastern Europe or they may even be, even be brought right back to the UK. Uh, private schools have also uh, gone abroad. They've also globalized. Superdry, Zara, Diesel, all of these companies have done these sorts of things. So globalization is doing all of these things on here and we can use Ansos Matrix to create some analysis. Now, in one paragraph, if you can go through all of this, you should be able to get good analysis here, right, Ansos Matrix, high income elasticity of demand, low price elasticity of demand, uh, high gross margin, strong brand, building a brand, short term, long term, building up a brand, etc. Right, but also good application because all of these firms have actually gone global, okay? Uh, we are still doing lesson, sorry, 
Lesson uh, 67, and we're still doing globalisation. I've just picked out an essay here on globalisation. The question is, does the increasingly global nature of business mean that all organisations need to change their strategy significantly? Justify your answer with uh, businesses, with business, businesses that you know. Okay, uh, so the absolute key is just to is just to answer the question. So it's all about do businesses need to change their strategy significantly because of globalization? The essay is not about should firms go abroad to sell their goods, right? Okay, so you could argue that for a small business in a niche market, uh, they may not really need to change their strategy very much because of globalization. And according to Ansos Matrix, which we just looked at, is if you decide to go to a new country, particularly in the emerging markets, or a brick country or a mint country, then it is a risk. However, right, Dyson, m and Superdry, Zara, Skoda, Tata, JLR, they've all, made, they've all moved abroad and they've made a pretty good success of that process. So on the first paragraph, I'll just talk about Tata, JLR again, and you would go through all the things we've just been through. Now that one paragraph can get you good analysis, and you may also have good application because we've already mentioned one, two, three, four, five, six, I can think of maybe more firms, Cause Cobra, for example. Right, so I would suggest that Tata JLR have in fact changed their strategy significantly because they've decided to buy an upmarket car, a new product, and also move it into a new market, which is uh, Brazil, Russia, India, and China. And it's a car that's doing particularly well, and it's been very, very successful. So they've not only have they changed their strategy significantly, but it's also been a very successful strategy. Paragraph two, we've got Primark, we've got Dyson, we've got M&S. Okay, now all those countries, what they've done is they've moved their production abroad and obviously that will reduce their cost base. That will give them a higher return on capital employed, which is much cheaper to produce your goods abroad. However, there is a process now of, re of reshoring where the, those firms may well be coming back to the UK or America and Mexico. And if you study it, it's because in America and Mexico, their energy costs have fallen by a lot compared to China, and maybe it's better to have your goods closer to, closer to the uh, marketplace. Okay, so there has been some, some change in their strategies, okay? They still want to sell them on a global level, so there's not been a complete change, a radical change in their strategies. They're still low cost, they're high tech, they're up markets, but there has been a change in their strategy. Right, also you can talk about different firms have different strategies in different cultures, e.g. Tesco's. Now, Tesco supermarket, we all know what it is in the UK, but when they move to Poland or they move to China, they are going to listen to the culture of the people in those particular countries. So they do need to change their strategies. By how much? By a lot. Maybe quite significantly. They still, they know they're still fundamentally a shop, so they may change their strategy slightly. Zara, though, Zara hasn't changed. It's, it still produces its clothes in Eastern Europe, hasn't decided to produce them in China, and the reason for that is, is because Eastern Europe is still low cost, but it's also closer to home, which means that they can get their products out much more quickly than if they were produced in China. So they haven't changed their strategy. Cause Cobra. Well, Cause is produces Carlsberg. Carlsberg is a beer that's drunk in, in, in Europe, but they took over Cobra as a joint venture. Now, they will hope that they can produce this into a global brand, and that's why they've taken over Cobra. So they have changed their strategy a lot. So they've looked at a new beer, and they try to sell that across the world, particularly in Asia. People tend to like high-quality premium lager. So when you come to conclude all of this, Right, we can say that a number of companies have changed their strategy significantly because I've already proven that, e.g. Tata JLR calls Cobra. However, uh, some companies may not have changed their strategies very much. They may still be cost minimization, Primark. However, right, they have moved their, their, their production abroad to where it is cheaper. M&S have done that, although they've started to reshore with, 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 with their product. So once again, we can give a nice summary on here. So on this essay, paragraph one, we've got good analysis. We may have good application almost by the end of the introductory paragraph. We mentioned a lot of firms, and in, in, our, in our conclusion, we've compared and contrasted different firms to the extent to which they change their strategy. Okay?